Are you ready, Chris? I sure am, Jamie. Great! Today's show is about the SARS general requirements that we all need to know. And you know, the requirements apply to all SARS engagements, compilations, reviews, and even those cute little critters, preparations. Let's get Ferris the ferret to help. Ferris! Ferris! Here I am! Hey, Ferris! Do you know what type of environment SARS general requirements live in, in the wild? Well, of course. They all live in AR Section 60. I'm not sure I know where that is, Ferris. Me neither. Here, let me show you on my map. First, all reporting standards can be found at the Standards section of the AICPA website. And once there, you look for the Preparation, Compilation, and Review standards. And once you get there, it's easy. Simply look for AR Section 60 and you found your general standards. That's great! Now we'll know what to do for all SARS engagements. Including those that may not involve financial statements. You know, Chris, with the discovery of SARS-21, the SARS apply to more than just financial statements. That's truly amazing. But before we can go any further, we need to learn the official definition of financial statements. Let's see if our friend the koala bear knows. The koala knows that financial statements are a structured representation of historical financial information intended to communicate about an entity's economic resources and obligations at a point in time or the changes therein for a period of time in accordance with a financial reporting framework. That's really helpful, but sometimes I get mixed up. Just like when people call them koala bears. They're not bears, but marsupials. You're right, Ferris. I forgot. Aren't they bears? Because they don't have the right qualifications. <laughs> so, what are some of the other type of financial information under SARS? Well, just like apples are not like oranges, they're still food for various animals, even though there are differences. I get it. You may want to do a prospective statement like budget or a projection. Well, those would certainly not fall under the technical definition of a financial statement because they're not historical. Precisely, but then certain other historical presentations would not qualify either, such as simple schedules of expenses or any other form of supplementary information. True, so while those may not be a financial statement, they could still fall under the SARS. I guess we would technically call those presentations other financial information. Yes, but to keep things simple, the SARS will refer to them all simply as financial statements. Tastes good to me. It's really important to follow the ethics. My friend the fox knows to follow the rules. He knows that for all SARS engagements, you have certain responsibilities. For one, your client expects you to do your job. But you also need to consider the public interest. You don't want to do something for your client that may harm others. That's why it would be wrong to inflate the sales figures. Right, Ferris, and that's related to integrity. While the fox has a reputation for being cunning, the practitioner will want to consider whether what he or she is doing is the right thing to do. It would help to remain objective and independent. That's right. You wouldn't want the fox guarding the hen house. <laughs> and just like the fox likes a cozy environment to live in, the practitioner will want to exercise due care. And those points will differ slightly based on the nature and scope of the services to be provided. Speaking of services, I need to get an oil change for my Ferretti. Ferris, it says in the SARS that I'm required to apply professional judgment. What does that mean? I'm on it. It looks like I need to apply my experience, training, and knowledge in making decisions. But don't you simply follow the standard? Yes, but sometimes those standards may be a little cloudy in certain situations. So what do you do in that situation? It says you should consider the standards and make a decision. And I suppose that involves 
consulting with others. And to be prudent, always be sure to document your decisions. Hey, Jamie and Ferris, come over here and see what I got. So, you've heard of teacup chihuahuas, teacup pigs, here's the latest creation sensation. Teacup giraffe! Wow, it's amazing! Somebody must have broken a lot of rules to create that. I'm glad you brought up rules because we need to discuss the conduct with the rules. Well, that's pretty simple. We follow the SAR standards. Yes, but there's also other sources to consider, like interpretations. Oh, I forgot about those. Well, they're somewhat of a rare breed, but I suspect that we'll be finding more of them over the next few years. We're required to follow those as well. What about all this stuff at the end of the standard? Those items in the appendices are called application and explanatory guidance. Yes, and while they're good advice, you're not required to follow them. And what about all these other books you have lying around here? Well, any CPE workbooks or practice aids are considered other publications and would not be required at all. Although they could be followed if we feel they're useful. Do you always have to follow the rules? Well, if the standard says should rather than must, you can skip it providing you have good reason and document the departure. Well, I think we should get this little guy back to his herd. Certainly management has some responsibilities in all of this. Well, let's see. Ferris? One member of management coming up. I'm a manager that works in a tree. I'm a branch manager. We need to learn about management's responsibility in SARS engagements. Well, I'm responsible for the selection of the framework, internal control, prevention and detection of fraud, accuracy and completeness, and of course, providing you with everything you need to do your job. So basically you're responsible for uh, everything. Yes, but let's keep that quiet, okay? It'll be our secret. So what's left? Client acceptance. How do you know which jobs to accept? Well, you already know you have to meet your ethical requirements. Yeah, and I guess we'd have to be able to get the information that we need. And I am not going to accept any job where I don't feel I can trust management. Ooh, that's a bit harsh. Speaking of acceptance, take a look. Aww. It looks like the cute little guy got accepted into the herd. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.